Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to disassemble, fully disassemble a MNTD or minted gold spot miner. Um, this may be a similar process to the Rack V2, although I, I'm not certain. Um, I can only speak for the MNTD models. Uh, this should work for the black spot as well as the gold spot. I do have a gold spot here today. Uh, if you're anything like me, with all the recent changes to the helium network it may no longer be that profitable for you to continue mining with these this is actually an extra one i had a family member's house and i uh, decided to get it back because internally this is actually a raspberry pi model 4 um the gold spot miners will be a the eight gigabyte model and the black spots will be the four gigabyte model so yeah, I mean, if you're in need of a Raspberry Pi 4, you can disassemble it, take that out, and use it just like a regular Raspberry. Raspberries are also extremely difficult to find right now. Um, so if you're like me and need the Raspberry more than you need to make a couple of cents a day mining, you can go through this process and take that out, use it for whatever you need to there. Um, all right, now to get started, uh, just to let you know, I did disassemble this already. I put it together really quickly. I didn't bother putting in every single screw. I will point out where the screws are that you need to remove, um, but just keep that in mind as we go through. So in this case on top here, you can see that there's two that are still in it, although there should be four. So just again, keep that in mind as we're going through this disassembly. I'll try to point that out everywhere I remember too. Um, but again, gold spot miner, you want to find the top. So you can just look at the, uh, the wording there. This is the top on this model here. I'm just going to use a Phillips screw, screwdriver. And like I said, so normally there would be four screws here. I only have the two that I put back in for the purpose of this video. So let's do that. And while I'm doing this, I do just want to take a quick moment to say I am not a YouTuber. I don't have a studio or a great camera. This is actually a GoPro. But I wasn't able to find a proper te full teardown of these miners. So I just wanted to upload it in case anybody else might find it useful. But again, take off these four Phillips screws that are in each corner. Now I would recommend to flip it over and go ahead and take off the four that are on the un underside as well. Again, I only put two back here, so I'm just gonna remove these. All right, so we're gonna flip it back to where it's right side up according to the wording there this top part simply comes off there's nothing other than those screws holding onto it so we'll move that aside this is the internals here and so you can already see the regular raspberry pi 4 there at the bottom this is an additional uh low it's a radio that's used for the helium mining but it's an additional pcb that's put on top of the raspberry but before we get to that, we do want to remove this antenna just to make the uh, process a little further down the road a bit easier. And you'll see that it is actually just connected here. So you can use any tool you'd like to pop that off. Now, if you plan to reuse this in the future, you may want to be a little bit more careful than I am here. But if you don't, then have your way with it. Anyway, <clears throat> so let's go ahead. You just remove this antenna wire. Now to remove this, it's really just held on by this little hex nut. So if you hold one side, mine's already loose because again, I, I disassembled this earlier. But if you hold on to one end and then loosen the other, that'll just come right out. Set this down here a bit easier. And there is, on this outer part, there is a nut as well as a small washer. If I can get that off. Just put that aside and then this part will just come right out like that. Put that aside. Now looking here, there is four Phillips screws that hold in this additional PCB to the Raspberry Pi. So we're gonna unscrew all four. Again, in my case, there's only two here.
All right, now before we try to pull this out, if you notice here on the left side, there's a couple of things you're gonna wanna do. So you wanna remove this gold piece of tape. This is where you would have an SD card inserted. You can just, you do need to pull that out in order to continue disassembly. Mine's already out. And then you have these three rubber grommets that are here. I, you can see the other end right here. I'm not quite sure exactly what those are for. If not just to seal up these holes, but you can pull those right out. I'll put them aside here. All right. Now, next, we're going to have to take this PCB off of the Raspberry Pi. It's connected via the GPIO headers that are up here. Now, you need to be careful with this because you don't, if you're planning to use the Raspberry Pi, you don't want to bend those pins that are below this. Um, essentially, what we want to do is pull straight up. It's a little difficult just kind of with the way things are in here. Uh, mine's a little looser because, again, I've done this already. And I apologize that I keep saying that, but I just want to remind you, your experience may be a little bit different the first time you open this up. But what I did was I took a spudger that came with my iFixit little toolbox that I'm using today. Um, and it's, having worked with Raspberry Pis, I know that if you can't come straight up, you can try to get one or the other end, the left or right end here, kind of up a bit. And then maybe just wiggle it left and right until it comes right off. So in this case, what I did, the only place I could really get leverage with this spudger was over here on the right side. So I just kind of stuck one in there and pried up slowly, but as much as I could on this end. And then using the space here, I did the same on the left side. You want to go slowly, just little by little, inch your way up until you can kind of feel that it's loose enough. Oh, mine popped off there. But essentially, once you get to a point where you can kind of grab this heat sink here and kind of wiggle it back and forth until it pops straight off. And now you can see the uh, GPIO here that I, it was connected to. But we'll set this aside. And there, of course, you can see the Raspberry Pi. Not sure if you can see that in the camera. Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. And again, this is the 8 gigabyte. Not sure if that 8 was there, put there so they could remind themselves when they were assembling this. But any gold spot will be the 8 gigabyte model. Now, one other thing I failed to mention was down on this end, there is this small kind of button array that's made out of plastic that sits right there that is f uh connects to this little button here it's kind of a pass through in order to enable the bluetooth on this to sync up to the helium app so once you pull this out this piece will just pop right off it's only had held in there by the uh the pressure of that other pcb kind of sitting against it but we'll put that aside now over on the right side so normally uh, these two ports here are blocked. You can see the little kind of block that goes there. This Ethernet port is the only one that's open and exposed. Before we proceed, we do need to get these out. I left one out so you can kind of see here um, exactly what it is. It's just a piece of gold plastic that kind of goes into the USB ports there, sits flush with the case. Um, you do need to get these out in order to be able to take the case apart. Um, what I did is now that you can kind of see here that we have a little bit of play in the case now that we've begun disassembly it moves just a bit but if, if you kind of pull this top part to the right and this this little bottom section to the left you get a little bit more play with these ports here so you will notice if I kind of move it around there they stick out just a bit and so what I managed to do here was again get our spudger get into a spot here and just kind of start wedging it out slowly you don't want to break this because you want to be able to use those usb ports later on but once you get to a spot where it's far enough apart you can kind of just grab it pinch it and pull it out and you'll do this again for both of these the usb 3 as well as the usb 2 and set those aside now if you tried to pull it apart here, you'd notice that it's not 
it's wiggling but it's not going to come apart so this took me a little while to figure out there's a couple of things holding it in here um these standoffs here are actually screwed in to the case itself these gold standoffs to the bottom part of the case and you'll grab the standoff and you'll unscrew it and at a certain point it's probably easier to use your fingers there and again there's four one two three four one in each corner so we're just going to remove or loosen all four of these you do have to basically take them the entire way out in order to get the pie out of the case uh -oh. just flip that over to get it out We've got two more here again i apologize about the lighting this is the best i could do and there's three and one more okay so now that you have all four of those removed um, you can now actually separate the device from the casing entirely now you'll notice I, I did actually bend this little heat sink here the good thing is these heat sinks aren't permanent they actually wiggle a bit um, and you can replace them they're very cheap if, to find on Amazon but essentially find a place that you can grab here and if you flip it upside down you're gonna want to just kind of apply a bit of separation pressure wiggle it about and you'll get those separated you'll see there was a big piece of what looks like a thermal pad it's making contact with the bottom of the pie and i'm assuming trying to absorb that heat into the casing itself but this is essentially the only part of the pie that was making physical contact with the casing i know when i first saw this i assumed that the whole thing was going to be kind of a heat absorber absorber heat sink thing um, but no, it uh, appears like maybe that bottom part is the only piece that's absorbing any of the heat. Um, but because of this, there will be, this is a bit sticky, so it will take you a little bit of work to separate these two. Now that you have those separate, last thing to do is to take the pie out. And so you'll see again, these are kind of held in by this portion here. So you want to take the opposite end, just kind of push it down a bit and kind of work work it out of the case what you don't want to bend anything too much it does take a bit of work and i thought it'd be a bit easier because i had it out earlier but there we go all right so we'll put this piece aside and so now you'll see just a standard Raspberry Pi 4 that you can use for any of your other projects. Um, this is essentially what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this and use it as a uh, Bitcoin Lightning node. I've been waiting, trying to find stock everywhere and been unable to. Um, but now I have one. One other thing I want to note is take a look back at this case. Um, when yours will look a bit different. So it will have this opening here, which is that little pass through button to enable Bluetooth um, and it'll have this port open which is the USB-C power these are not open on the original cases um, because you don't use any of these ports these are the micro HDMI I believe um, as well as an audio interface to the Raspberry Pi now the really cool thing is that if you look on the underside um, you have this aluminum part of the case and then on the outside there's like this plastic sheet that they kind of just laminated over which is covering the unused ports I'm sorry the uh, ports that you, you're not going to use it kind of covers them you can see that kind of here um, and it leaves open the two that you will be using now in my case I may actually be reusing this um, so I may put my pie back in here and use this as my pie case i might try to install a fan on the top here but because of that and because i noticed that this is just kind of a uh, little plastic i thought maybe i can cut through it and let me see if i can grab a light here and see if i can't show you then 
Uh, I don't know how good that looks, but you can kind of see the light shining through there, um, which gave me the hinted to me that, yeah, you could probably cut through it. So that's exactly what I did. Turn that off. I just grabbed a knife and from the outside, I just kind of poked through that plastic as best I could to get out their appropriate shapes. Um, and so now when I put my Pi back in, I have access not only to the USB power, but to the uh, micro HDMI's and that audio interface should I need that. And of course on this side, you don't need to cut through anything, but you now have the ethernet port as well as all four of the USB ports. So that essentially is how you can take apart the minted or MNTD helium miners uh, in order to get to a raspberry pi like i said at the beginning the black spots should be the very same process the rack v1s and v2s might be a bit different um so your your mileage may vary there but hopefully you found this useful if you need a raspberry pi you already have one of these and you're not making much money off of it this is probably the way to go